In today's episode, we discuss the pros and cons of staying both on and off site during your Walt Disney World visit. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Street Magic. I'm your host, Jeremy Stein, and am joined, as always, by my co-host, good friend and off-site hotel enthusiast, John Marone. Good afternoon. In today's episode, we are discussing pros and cons of staying on-site as well as off-site during your Walt Disney World visit. Please check us out on the web at MainSTMagic.com, as well as like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at MainSTMagic. So, John, this one I'm really excited to, to talk about um, because I originally presented this as, hey, let's tell everybody why you should stay on site. And you said, well, let's also talk about off site, which is one of the best options um, for a lot of the reasons we're going to get into. So let, let's take them one at a time. Um, and we have some specific items that we want to talk about uh, between on site and off site. Um, the, the first one let's talk about is price because that's that's to me when people are booking a Disney trip that's obviously going to be one of the first things they have to look at is price you're going to have a budget uh, depending on your length of stay uh, depending on whether you're flying or driving depending on your food situation price is key and there can be major price differences as we've seen from value to deluxe resort there's also can be price differences between staying on site and off site um so first, just the put you on the spot here. Why don't you just give a quick kind of overview about what does on-site mean and what does off-site mean? Yeah, and it's I guess it's getting blurred a little bit, especially um, with recent news. Yeah, with recent news on that. So on-site is going to be a true Disney resort, or whether it's a value, a moderate, or a deluxe, yeah, um, DVC. So any of the Disney properties that's on-site. Off-site is going to be anything that's not. Disney, but it also includes, you know, the Disney Springs Hotel Boulevard is, those are off-site resorts. Yeah, there's like seven hotels there that Correct. are included. And so with the recent news, you staying off-site, you did have some disadvantages. I think one of the biggest disadvantages of staying off-site was you were not eligible to participate in extra magic hours unless you stayed at the Hilton um, property, which right. was the Hilton Lake Buena Vista, right across from the Disney Springs there. That one did allow um, you to take advantage of extra magic hours. Yeah. Which was unique because there was a time with the kids and I, we I stay at so many hotels, and Hilton being one of them, that I just would keep four Hilton keys with me all the time. And I'd just be at the park and say, hey, I'm staying at Hilton yeah. and get the extra magic hours. Yeah. There was no other way to check it. They right. only checked it by oh, yeah. room key. Yeah. Um, and the room key said Hilton. Right. And so um, that, you know, that was just a little bit different um, for that. So now, that so not having extra magic hours. And then the second thing was if you're off-site, you didn't get to take advantage of the 60 days booking fast, ba- fast pass ahead of time. And just here this month, that was changed. Yeah. So now the off-site hotels of Hotel Boulevard, those seven, you are now eligible for the 60 days um, in advance of FastPass. So I think the lines are being blurred between off-site, on-site, but on-site, a Disney hotel. Yeah. And and we can even go further off-site to anything that's within a 15, 20-minute drive. But I think what we really want to focus on is more within that Disney bubble and Disney property. Um, I don't think we need to talk about a Motel 6 that's, you know, 15 miles away. If, if that's what you're choosing for your vacation due to price and budget, perfectly fine. Or maybe you're splitting days, you know, between some of the other theme parks in Orlando. But we really want to focus more on what we will consider, uh, it'll be almost Disney-owned and non-Disney-owned as on-site and off-site. So back to price, you know, let's let's talk about some of the differences in price and try and make some comparables. So for for us, uh, in the past two years that we've been going on a monthly basis, um, we have stayed every single time except for once at a Disney-owned hotel. Uh, last November, 
as in over a year ago, we did stay at the Hilton Lake Buena Vista at Disney Springs um, because nothing was available in our budget for that weekend on Disney property. Uh, so you you stay offsite much more often. And uh, I know one of the good reasons, as you said, is due to travel, you can often maybe book with points or have a preferred status, which makes a lot of sense. But let's talk about the price difference. And maybe we decide to, to look at the, the nicer, moderate resorts, because these offsite hotels are nice. I mean, again, we're not talking about, you know, they're hotels. They're not little motels. They're, they're nice properties. Um, some of them have lazy rivers with their pool. They've got, you know, first class restaurants. They're, as you said, the line is very blurred. So what are we looking at price wise and the difference? Where it, do you think is an advantage? Where are the pros and cons to each of them? Yeah. So let's just say, let's just say it a family of four, Mm -hmm. right? We know they're smaller, we know there's bigger, but let's just say a family of four, two adults, two children. Off-site, you can be anywhere, and and if I stay within, let's stay within, within Disney of saying Hotel Boulevard, Mm -hmm. so you have those seven hotels there. Let's remember that the Swan and Dolphin are actually um, Starwood properties. Right. They are not Disney properties. Um, so even though they're on the grounds, they're that. You have the Bonnet Creek area. Mm-hmm. So Bonnet Creek includes a Hilton as well as a... Wyndham. Um, well, the Wyndham is, it- is a timeshare. Okay. And there's also the... Um, it's not a Conrad. Um, I forget. It always loses me. But there's a upscale one right next to the Hilton bonnet creek Mm -hmm. and also on disney property now there's a four seasons yes yeah so a four seasons you're looking upwards of five to seven hundred a night there are some places like the b resort Mm -hmm. or that on hotel plaza boulevard where you can be in the below 100 to the 150 range yeah um for a room with two queen size beds and everything, that's you know not bad. So you you get a good mix there of price. So I'd say price wise, you're probably anywhere from the hundred to seven hundred offsite. And then you know talking about points, so it's hard to stay. I don't I, I didn't pay attention to it, but let's say that for my stays last year, a third were either Hilton or Marriott stays with points. Mm-hmm. A third were DVC stays, yeah. and then a third I paid for a Disney room. Yeah. So, you know, I ran the gamut last year of a little bit of everything. Yeah. If you are a Hilton um, points member and you have enough points, the Hilton Bonnet Creek is an excellent choice, but you also have the Hilton Lake Buena Vista. You also have the Hilton... Um, Buena Vista Palace, mm-hmm. which is right across the street from it, and you have the Hilton Double Tree Suites, which is on Hotel Plaza Boulevard. It's the one furthest away. Okay. So there are plenty of Hilton properties right there to me on site that you have for points. If you're Marriott, well, Marriott and Starwood have combined, mm-hmm. so you have the Swan, the Dolphin. The Marriott World Center is across the way for um, across from I four. But it's right there. And then I believe the um, Gaylord Palms is also now under the Marriott okay. umbrella. Yeah. Which, which is, is another right there. huge resort, which yeah. is right there as well. And, you know, it's one of those that you don't have to get on I-4. You're just crossing I-4 right. to get to yeah. it. Um, so you, for point-wise, you do have a lot of choices. And then obviously you have your Hyatt and um, those. But for the two big ones, there are a lot of Hilton and Marriott properties right there to choose from if you're using points. And then yeah. if you can. They make uh, sense. Yeah. It makes perfect yeah. sense. It's, hey, I didn't pay anything for my room. Yeah. Now I could do other things. Right. Yeah. And and then with – so if we're, if we're talking out-of-pocket price and we're talking either you know rack room rates or a lot of these will offer deals as well as Disney offers deals – Here's what we have found and uh, as far as price goes, and this will just work into a bigger picture and you'll see why we tend to stay on property. Again, it makes sense for us. It doesn't make sense for everyone. Um, Disney, Disney owned properties have no resort fees and no parking fees. They're all wrapped into whatever you're paying for that room. And one thing Disney does right on pricing is they don't, they don't separate them. I know they're wrapped in there and I know, you know, when pricing goes up, it has to do with those types of things. But it's not like you see these separate line items. 
Whereas when you go to the offsite properties, you are paying on at most of them a resort fee of twenty to thirty dollars a night, and you're probably paying an additional parking if you self park, anywhere from twelve dollars up to maybe twenty dollars a night. So when you see some of these rooms, and you might say, "All right," and and I did a, I did a quick comparison um, just for the sake of of math and all. Uh, I just looked at a weekend in April, April thirteenth to fifteenth, two nights, uh, looking at two queen beds. Again, you could look at a family of four, two adults, two children. And if you looked at the um, Lake Buena Vista Hilton at the Disney Springs area, which is a beautiful hotel, amazing property, close proximity to Disney Springs and the, and the rest of the parks, um, it was listed as $244 a night. That's, that's pretty good when you're looking at Disney standards. But after you added resort fees and you added part, well, no, this was actually before parking, but resort fees and taxes, you're at $660.15 for the two nights. If we go over to a Port Orleans Riverside, um, which is a moderate resort, beautiful property as well, uh, you were looking at a royal guest room, which again, two queen beds, it's, it's got a little bit more theming to it, uh, and a garden view, um, you were looking at $289 a night. So you're thinking, all right, 289, that one was 244. Look how much ex- more expensive Disney is. But there's no resort fees and you're not going to pay parking. So at the end, the Disney hotel for two nights was $650.26. So technically it was $10 cheaper. Um, so it's just something and again, I'm not I love Disney properties. You've heard that through all our previous episodes. You'll hear it from from here on out. I just I love them for many other reasons we'll get into. But if you're looking at price and you're looking at budget, just please be aware of the additional costs that can be associated with the offsite hotels. Um, that's that's just something I wanted to make sure that people understood because um, those can definitely add up. Yeah, and so I'm a person that um, a little bit I won't say unique, but Disney obviously you're, doesn't. You're unique. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Disney doesn't have a reward system, right? No. no. So whether I spend, whether I stay five, ten, or twenty-five nights in a Disney hotel, what do I get? I get absolutely nothing. Correct. So there is no acknowledgement of that. Where at some of these other hotels, I maybe get free breakfast every morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which you know is part of it. Maybe. In some of them, at certain levels, my resort fee is waived or discounted. Um, so there are certain things that happen, upgraded rooms. Um, so, you know, different things to look at. So it's one thing that I pay attention to. But for me, what I was trying to go to on this is if I'm paying for a Disney property and I'm not using DVC, um, I'm, I tend, I'm going to stay off site versus a value. Yeah. Right, because yeah. as much as we say, hey, Pop Century is the best value. At the end of the day, Pop Century is a outside door, no hallways. Um, it's a motel. Yeah. Right, and if the motel price for Pop Century is under a hundred and twenty bucks, yeah, maybe I'll consider it. But above that. Yeah, it's not yeah. so, and it, it can line up with the offsite properties. The price can be very close. Um, yeah, so that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, so I, you know, Disney properties to me, moderates and deluxe, you're paying more for them. I also tend to think, at least for the moderates, or at least for the offsites I stay at, they would none of them fall in the value category. Yeah, they're all moderates or deluxe. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. And and I love that you bring up the the no Disney reward for staying because I I talk about this a lot and you know we again we've we've been every month for the past two years we've stayed out of the twenty four months we've probably stayed twenty two to twenty three times and you are correct there is the only reward we're given is a reward because we're already a pass holder so we're already giving them money there or we happen to live in Florida. Well, we decided to move to Florida. Thank you for rewarding us with some discounts, but you're right. I mean, I, I know it's not the same, but if I can go down to the gas station and order 10 coffees and, and get a, one for free, I would love to see some sort of program um, for for locals like us, because if you're local, local, you live in Orlando, chances are you're not staying overnight at a property. But when you're starting to get to two hours to probably up to five or six 
you know, like a lot of pass holders who still are going to visit several times a year. I would love to see anything that would reward us. Now, here's the thing. We keep going every month and we keep paying every month. So there's no incentive for Disney to reward us from a business sense. You just wish you could see them do something for the people that are spending, you know, all of their vacation time and all of their vacation money there. I, I don't. It's, it's not going to happen ever. Um, so I think your point about staying off site and using Hilton Rewards or Marriott or some of these is is really good because I guarantee if we had stayed off site all these times, we would have earned quite a few free nights over the past two years. Um, so, but, but that's going to take us into something else we want to talk about, which is size. Um, so I want to talk about not only size of the rooms because they're, um, I think we're going to lean on the con side mostly for Disney and we're the pro side for the off site. But let's also talk about the size of the resorts. Um, the Disney resorts are huge. So that, that can be a con because if you're staying in one of the buildings that is not a preferred, you have a long walk to transportation. You have a long walk to the lobby and the restaurants and often the main pool. Um, these offsite hotels, which are hotels in the sense of you enter from the inside into your room, um, they're most of these are towers. You know, they're you know, so you're you're walking maybe a hundred feet to an elevator. You're going down however many floors, and you're walking right out into the lobby and into the pool. So, I think those make a difference. And then you can speak much more on the room size, which I know you are going to get more square footage and more space in those offsite hotels than you are in most Disney moderate and uh, even deluxe studio properties. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely. I mean, I, in square footage wise, I mean, you don't have it, but the rooms tend to offsite. You tend it tends to be much easier to get two queens as a normal size room. Yeah. Then at Disney, where there's plenty of um, locations where if you have two beds, they're two full size beds. Right. And for a family of four, unless the children are small, that's tight. Yeah. Right. You get to, you know, to go from somebody who maybe in their normal life, um, husband and wife share a king size bed, and the kids are in twins. Now you go and you have two full size yeah. beds. It's, you feel like uh, you're back in college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's tight. So and then there's still in if you do have some of the Disney rooms, especially some of the values or even the moderates, there's a very small table mm-hmm. that's usually round with two chairs there. In a offsite, you're probably looking at a desk with one chair, and then either a small table with a lamp and another one chair or two chairs. Yeah. But there's at least some more room between the beds and all that. Yeah. And then the other thing would be, to me, the bathroom situation, right? Um, I look at some, and this is off-site, on-site, it doesn't matter. There are some hotel rooms that I have no idea how the bathroom was designed that it's like, well, I have to go into the bathroom and close the door to go to the bathroom. Right, right. But if it's a situation where someone has to sit on the toilet, one leg is up against the tub, (laughs) and the other one is touching the sink, um, (laughs) bathroom size is huge. And um, I find myself more and more, whether it's Disney or not, right, we want a sink outside of the bathroom. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, for somebody to shower and get ready while somebody else showers right. as well? Yeah. Or, you know, do we have two sinks, right? Yeah. One inside and one outside. So um, space, you probably pick up, I, and I don't know square footage-wise, but maybe it's anywhere from, you know, maybe 10 to 80 square feet per room, yeah. depending upon what off-site resort you're yeah. looking at no i think so and and the, the other good point with the bathrooms is i'm up i'm up early every morning i mean we, we usually get to the parks at rope drop but i'm if we're leaving you know if the park's opening at nine and and we're leaving the hotel room at eight i'm still up at 5 30 or 6 a lot of times and so even for me to put in my contacts or start to get ready for the day a lot of times in these disney especially when you get to the value and even some of the moderates you have a curtain separating the bathroom from the main room And that does not block out all the light. And a lot of times the way that they're maneuvered, your bathroom and the opening and the light is facing the room. So it's 
that's tough. And then I, I know for me, and I'm sure you're doing it sometimes, and a lot of people do when they travel, you still have to, to work maybe, you know, and, and, and maybe that's why you have the freedom or the luxury to go to Disney is because you're still doing a little work. So having those offsite hotels that have a dedicated space for you to maybe have your laptop and have something set up while you still have a table to eat at or, you know, for the kids to, to hang out at, I do think makes a big difference. Um, something else then that I want to talk about is transportation. Um, and you know, you, you can drive all you want to the parks. Um, we've started doing that recently as you guys do, unless it's magic kingdom offsite hotels, especially these ones near Disney Springs and the hotel Boulevard will offer uh, buses and transportation within, but it's not going to compare if you're used to the Disney transportation. Um, whereas, you know, you have, you have boats, you have monorails, you have buses, um, you can drive and your parking at the parks will be included if you're staying on a Disney owned property, whereas you're, I believe, going to have to pay if you're staying at one of the off sites and you go to park at one of the parks, which again is, I think it's at $20 a day now. Um, so something to think about. And I've, I've noticed, and again, this was only the one time that we stayed at that Lake Buena Vista, the shuttles, the bus shuttles to parks were running every 30 instead of what Disney says will be 15. And I believe when we did it, it did two parks. So I think it did um, Epcot and Hollywood Studios because they're in close proximity. So I think that day we were going to Epcot, but it had to stop at Hollywood Studios first. So we had to plan much further ahead. Um, with the way the parking was set up there, we just we didn't feel like driving. You know, we, we didn't want to walk all the way out to our car because we self-parked and then have to deal with all of that. So what have you found staying off site? Because I know you tend to drive a lot going into the the parks now again as a pass holder parking's included you don't have to worry about that but but what is it more like traffic wise um you know what what type of planning do you have to do if you're staying at one of these off-site properties and driving to you know what hey, let's just say you want to drive to to magic kingdom how good is the transportation that they're providing or are you just going to stick with an uber or some other form yeah so so here's my thing the um some of the buses, so take the bus for the Hilton Bonnet Creek. I think it's better in Disney transportation. It's mm-hmm. a motor coach. There, if you have um, scooters or strollers or that, the motor coaches have storage underneath. Mm-hmm. So they load all that up underneath, and then everybody gets on the motor coach, and that's everybody nice. has a seat. There yeah, is no that's standing. Nice. <laughs> um, as opposed to Disney, where we had this conversation. I know we didn't do it on the podcast, but you know there were a lot of comments from people, and we had this. You take some very busy times of the park. You're waiting for your Disney Resort bus. You've been waiting now. You, when you got there, the bus was there, filled up at left. The new bus pulls up. You're counting the number of people in front of you, and you're like, there's a good chance that I might get on this one, but I don't know. And if you do, you're standing. If you are, are you standing? And then one or two families pull up at the last minute in a motorized scooter, Mm -hmm. and they're put on immediately. Yes. They don't have to wait in line. Yeah. Um, And I'm not... I'm not saying that in some instances that shouldn't be the case, but... They get on, their family gets on, and you're like, I've been waiting here for, for half 25 hour, 45 minutes, minutes yeah. yeah, 30 minutes, whatever. And you're booted. They just walked up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that that is, I. so Disney bus I try and avoid, and I try and avoid just because of things like that, yeah. as we talked before on the episode with Len of just, you know, people, right? Yeah. Just keep me away yeah. from people. They're the downfall of Disney the buses, downfall. not the Disney buses. So <laughs> I drive... You drive, right, when we go yeah. to Disney because we're two, you know, two hours away. I will drive my car and park at Hollywood Studios. I will drive my car and park at Animal Kingdom. I will drive my car and I will park at Epcot. Uh-huh. Those are all three things that I get to park right in the lot of the park, and I can either walk to the entrance or take the tram yep. if I'm further back. Yeah. I don't have a problem driving to any of those. Yeah. And I'm in control. I come and leave when I want. Yep. Magic Kingdom... I will, if I am not on the monorail or I'm not staying at a smaller resort Uh where I will take the bus. So, again, 
I'm not talking old Key West or Saratoga or the Pop Century yeah. where the Several bus has to take and, yeah, yeah. six stops around the resort before we even get <laughs> off there and, and get going. Um, I will Uber, well, I will take a minivan yeah. for the 20 bucks being my first choice. Now, obviously, I can't take a minivan from an offsite. Right. But I can take an Uber, yeah. and I can take an Uber to Contemporary, and I just walk across right. the street. Exactly. So I will do that as opposed to driving, parking, at ticket and transportation, and then taking the boat or the monorail over. Um, I will Uber it over or Lyft or whatever yeah. every single time. Oh, yeah. So transportation to me, um, number one, if you're able to stay on a monorail property, that's your first, you, you know, that's an advantage over everything else. Right. Number two, if you are able to stay at a Epcot property, beach, boardwalk, yacht, swan, dolphin, even though those two are offsite, because there you can walk or boat to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. Right. I don't have to worry. I only need a bus for Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom. So those resorts that I'm right next to a park or easy transportation, Wilderness Lodge is another great one, right? Yeah. The boat to the Magic Kingdom is a piece so of cake. So perfect. Yeah. So that's right there and back. I don't have to worry about it as much. So Disney, to me, at the deluxe transportation, they win that every time. Yeah. At the moderates, I'll still give it somewhat to Disney. Um, the value or some of the DVCs, I don't think you're much different. So if you're at an off-site and you didn't drive your own car, Uber. Yeah. Right? Six to ten bucks, wherever you're going, and just Uber. They're going to drop you off at all the parks except for Magic Kingdom, and they're just telling them drop me off at the Contemporary. Yeah, and you're a shirt walk, and 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 we, you know, we talk we talk about Magic Kingdom and parking a lot, and and for anyone who doesn't know why we're just so adamant against ever driving there, um, if you have not been to the Magic Kingdom or you know you've always just used the transportation within Disney, uh, when that park was built, it was specifically designed to not see the parking lot. I mean, it was all part of you being engrossed and immersed in the magic kingdom and main street and not turning around and seeing, you know, seas of cars. So because of a lot of this layout and because of the proximity of the water and the, the monorail resorts, uh, parking was put much further away. So you're going to go, first of all, you're going to park in a, a parking lot that is obscenely huge. I mean, it is unbelievable. Uh, you're going to either walk very, very far, or you're going to take a tram to two options, which is now a monorail station or to get on the ferry boat. You're then going to do like John said and count the people in front of you to see if you're going to make it on, or you're going to wait for the next one. You're going to then either monorail or ferry boat over to the Magic King entrance. So again, it's just, there's so much behind parking there that it is much worse, you know, it's, it's, it's much more worth just using the Disney transportation or offsite doing an Uber. Um, so that's, that's where a lot of that, that comes from for us. Um, so let's talk amenities, uh, including the pool at the two different areas. And I'm going to wrap into this a little bit theming, uh, because something else that goes to the top of our list, uh, when we are staying or picking a place to stay is the theming. And the fact that with Disney, you're going to get theming throughout. Now, we know some of the refurb rooms are losing a little bit of that Disney feel, but they're still very well done. But you have theming throughout the entire resort. Um, you're not going to get that type of theming at an off-site. You will. I know we stayed at the Lake Buena Vista. They had a, they had a, a Disney-themed store down in the lobby. But other than that, you walk in, and to me, the feeling of being in a lobby is like, being in a lobby anywhere else I've ever traveled throughout the U.S., there is no different feel. But amenity-wise, I, I don't, I don't think there's a huge difference from what I know between what you potentially have access to as far as good food, as far as a good pool between on-site and off-site. Yeah, I so I I tend to give the amenities to Disney versus off-site on on this, um, but the pool themings for Disney are better. Now, again, I go keep going back to it. The Hilton um, Bonnet Creek, the Wyndham Bonnet Creek, yeah. the Hilton Buena Vista Palace, all have lazy rivers, yeah. themed pools, and they're awesome. Yeah. Nice pools, a place to spend a day, and it's good. Um, so I like those pools at those three off-site places. Yeah. The other off-site locations, 
the pools might as well be from the 70s or 80s, right? It's a big yeah. rectangle, and there you right. go. Um, but more and more as the hotels are redoing, they're, they're upping their um, pool game um, versus, you know, some of the things that um, – because they're up against Disney, right? So you're seeing that. Restaurants, yeah, there's good restaurants off-site. There's good restaurants at Disney. I just think Disney you have so much to pick from. Yeah. Um, so you look at it, it's like, okay, Disney, the values all have food courts, mm-hmm. right? The on-site or the off-sites might not have – Obviously, you don't have food court. Yeah, more of the it's usually something like a Starbucks. If but you have you're, anything you're quick, have a Starbucks, it's yeah. You're going to have a little counter area yeah. for some sandwiches or a market that you can get some quick things on it. So, it, you know, to me, that's that is somewhat a wash. But there is no Disney. So Disney's at least given you the game room. Yeah. So you have the arcade. Yep. At every place. Yeah, even down at the values. Yeah. the The pool is better themed. Yeah. Not all of the Offsites with their pool, do they have a restaurant or bar mm-hmm. outside? Which Disney, you're getting that yeah. at those to be able to get to. So I want my black cherry lemonade. I can't get it offsite. I need to get it at Disney. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I think amenities. And then, you know, toiletries, I think it's hard to beat H2O Plus. Yeah. I so know. I'm okay with the Disney toiletries. Um, there's some decent offsite ones, but you better be staying at a uh, at a higher end. Yeah, one. we have. And, and just to note, if you ever stay overnight at our house and use our guest room, I have a full supply of Disney H two O products, uh, unwrapped soaps, shampoos, conditioners, body lotions. Uh, they're all ready uh, for you to use for anybody that that comes and stays with us. Um, two more quick things I do want to mention before we wrap up, as far as staying. On property, uh, one is you are going to be included. You're going to have magic bands included. Um, now, now we know that for a plain magic band that you get for free, air quote time uh, with Disney, you can purchase for twelve ninety nine and link it to my Disney experience if you're staying off site. Now you won't have access to it to open your room door, but you can still link it to park tickets to again, you know, your your photo pass or memory maker. Um, so you can still purchase that. And then um, what, one of the other uh, things I do want to talk about is Magical Express. So if you're flying in uh, and you're staying on property, you have access to Magical Express, which is, again, Disney's free bus service that comes included with your stay. Um, so they will pick you up from the airport, bring you to your Disney hotel, transfer your luggage. You don't even have to pick up your luggage when you, you land. They're going to take care of everything basically for you. You're going to get to your room. You're, they're going to deliver your luggage. Um, and, and then when you go back to the airport, you take the Magical Express as well. Uh, you don't have that luxury for offsite. You're looking at an Uber ride uh, or a taxi, which, we, again, we're just talking about added cost. So I think right. that's one one other benefit to staying on property as far as somebody who may be flying in. Um, any last parting thoughts? I know uh, I believe over our next several trips we're staying – on site, uh, y- your trips and mine for for quite a few. So um, yeah, I, we, we can always come back on some trip reviews and, and talk more about some. Yeah, of these. I guess my next one this month I'm off site because I'm at Dolphin. Uh huh. Um, but it, you know, to me that's an on site. But it's off site because, as you mentioned with Magic Bands, Magic Bands don't open the room doors yeah. at Swan or Dolphin, nor can they be used for charging on Disney property. That's a bonus. I think <laughs> because yeah. there have been plenty of times we head down to a lobby at Disney property and we forget our wallet. Um, and next thing you know, it's on our credit card. But, um, you know, and I know it sounds like a little thing as far as magic bands opening your, your room. But when you have young kids like you and I do, it's the greatest thing on earth. You know, there's, there's a fight every time we go back to the room on whether Kaylin or Lacey is going to open the door and we've got to go, all right, Lacey opened it last time. Kaylin gets to open it this time. And then, you know, sometimes I want to open it. Yeah. But that's kind of the that's that's why we love magic bands. But uh, thanks again for listening, and make sure you subscribe to our show on iTunes and leave us a rating and review. That's all for now. We'll see you real soon.